So have you seen these new 3D photos on Facebook? You basically, you know, you're like scrolling down your feed and like the image looks like it's orbiting around as you're scrolling. It's really cool. And I've only seen this effect. I think they released this last year for just iPhones. You had to have an iPhone to take these kinds of images. And they just released an update where you can create one manually using your computer. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create your own 3D photo using any version of SketchUp. You don't need any rendering plugins or anything like that. And we're even gonna talk about how you can create one manually using an image editor like Photoshop. So let's check it out. Hey, I'm Matt from mastersketchup.com, author of SketchUp to Layout and co-author of SketchUp and Layout for Architecture. So how does this whole 3D photo thing work? So in order to create a 3D photo on Facebook, you need two images. The first one is, you know, a raw image of whatever it is you're trying to show. So that could be a direct export from SketchUp. It could be an export from your rendering program or whatever 3D modeling program you're using. It could even be just a picture or a painting, which we'll get into later on how you would actually set that up. So the first image is just your image. The second image is the important one. This is what's gonna give the 3D parallax effect, and that's your depth map. Now, all a depth map is, is a black and white image that uses color value to represent how far away objects are from the camera. So the darker parts of a depth map are far away from the camera, and the lighter parts of a depth map are closer to the camera. So you can see in this kitchen example, you know, this island countertop, this is really light because it's the closest part of the kitchen to the camera. As you go deeper into the scene, these cabinets back here in this corner is darker. And then all you do is you rename your depth map to have underscore depth at the end of the file name. And then you just select both of those files, drag them right into Facebook and then Facebook does the magic. It will automatically create the 3D photo based off of those two photos that you dropped into it. And that's it, that's how you do it. So the big question is how do you create the depth map? And that is what I'm really excited to share with you because it's so easy. So the secret to creating a depth map in native SketchUp is to use fog. Now fog, if you think about it, really is simply a depth map. You know, when you turn it on, the things that are closer to the camera look different than things that are further away from the camera. The only thing is by default, fog uses the background color. So all we need to do is uncheck this box and then select this color swatch and choose black. And then that completely changes the fog effect to use black and white to create our depth map. Now you do need to make some changes to your style as well because this isn't gonna work as is. So in the styles panel, in the drop down menu under default styles, you can start with hidden line mode. That'll give us a good place to start with. And what hidden line will do is basically render all the faces as white but we can't stop there. We actually have to get rid of all the edges as well. So we're gonna to go to the edit tab and on this first box here for edges, you're gonna deselect edges and make sure profiles are off as well. You don't want anything checked here. And if you wanna double check the face settings, you just wanna make sure that this hidden line mode is selected under the face settings box here. So once you've made a change to the style, we wanna make sure we save this as a new style and we can call this depth map and just update that with the new name there. And then we can go back to the fog and start tweaking it so that it uses the widest range of values to represent depth. So this is really just kind of a manual process, but you wanna drag the slider. That way all parts of the model at least have some sort of color to it. You don't want it to be like this because then the objects that are completely black are just gonna be lost and flat in the background. So you wanna make sure there's some gradation, some gradient in the color. Um, <laughs> throughout the model. So yeah, so you wanna just tweak that there. And then with the front slider, you wanna slide that 
you know, start it way at the front of the camera and then just keep pushing it towards the right until you notice the front part of the model starting to turn pure white. Now see that right there? You can almost see the plane of pure white going through the model. So once you've hit that plane, you wanna back the slider off just a little bit until you get it right to the closest object that's facing the camera. So once you have this set up, that's your depth map. So if you want, you could save this as a scene in order to come back to it later. But basically you just go to file and export and 2D graphic and you wanna click on options here and make sure that transparent background is unchecked. You don't want that to be checked. And then we'll click okay. And you can just use the view size here or if you wanna type in a resolution, you can do that as well. The important thing is just to make sure that both images are identical. So now you're just gonna save this as a PNG, but you need to make sure you do the underscore and type in depth. That's the only way that Facebook is gonna recognize that you're trying to create a 3D photo. So that's really important. And then we'll click export. And then the next thing you're gonna do is just turn off fog and go back to your styles panel and then pick any style that you want. You know, anything that's going to show the model. And you wanna make sure not to move the camera at all because the camera position needs to be in the exact same location as the depth map. So you can even come down here and use like one of the sketchy styles. I always like this one here, the pencil edges, and then just pick a style that you want and then you go to file, export, basically the same procedure. And this one you can just name whatever you want, click export, and you're done, that's it. You don't need any third party rendering programs. You don't need anything at all, just native SketchUp tools, which I think is really cool. And then you just pop into Facebook, select both the photos, drag them in, and Facebook will create your 3D photo for you. Now the cool thing is, is you're not just limited to creating 3D photos out of your 3D models. You could actually grab any photograph and create a massing model in SketchUp using Match Photo and bring life to old photographs like this one. So this is actually a picture of the house I grew up in. This house and the land it's sitting on has been in my family since the 1840s. What I was able to do is actually have this 3D model that's based on the image. So a side note, I actually have the blueprints for this house, which is really cool. So I, I use that to build this house, but in theory you could actually build a basic massing model just off of this image by using Match Photo. So Match Photo allows you to align the camera perspective of your model to the camera perspective of the photograph that was taken. And from there you can, you know, extrude things and have it match up and basically build a model just by referencing the image. So I'm not gonna go into how Match Photo works in this video. I actually just did a full tutorial on how to use Match Photo a couple of weeks ago, and I'll link to that in the description below if you're interested. But from there, I can create the depth map using that same fog feature. And when you upload it to Facebook, it creates a really cool effect. Now you can even manually create a depth map using something like Photoshop. So this is a picture I took of Half Dome in Yosemite National Park. And I created a depth map, which as you can see, it's like really basic. Like you don't need to go crazy with the depth map, like as far as being really precise, because Facebook kind of jumbles it up anyways. I mean, there's a lot of blurry artifacts and stuff like that, but you know what? I mean, people see it so small on their phone anyways that the effect just works fine. It's not something you need to really obsess over getting everything perfect. But basically what I did here is I just overlaid several layers while you know tracing over the different parts of the image. So I just set the layer opacity of the image. I had a copy of the background layer up above here that I set the opacity. And then I just drew these various shapes on top and set them to various colors or shades of gray, shades of black and white. And when I uploaded that one, it looked pretty cool as well. So I hope you found this video helpful. I was like super excited to do this video because I saw a number of posts on some of the SketchUp groups I'm in on Facebook 
And it was just so cool to like scroll down and like notice the effect. So I hope you explore this feature a little bit and have some fun with it. Now, there's a few articles that I am gonna link to in the description below if you wanna read up more on this feature. I'm sure they're gonna expand upon it in the future. So if you're watching this video in the future, there might be some more information for you as well. Now, if you like this tutorial and you wanna get more SketchUp tutorials, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. I'm doing a lot of SketchUp tutorials and I just love doing this for you. So don't miss it. Make sure you subscribe and thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.